This video will explore the history of natural law from its roots in ancient Greece to the modern day. Natural law, or natural moral law, as it is sometimes known, has its roots in the ancient Greek and Roman world. It can be seen in plays from the 5th century BCE by Sophocles, and in the philosophy of Aristotle, a statue of whom you can see on your screen, in the 4th century BCE. Aristotle believed that natural justice was not the same as the law. Laws may vary from place to place, but there is a natural form of justice which is unchangeable. Aristotle believed that an action is right or wrong depending upon whether it leads towards the good end that everybody seeks. It is not the action in itself that is good, but that it helps human purpose. For Aristotle it is not easy to say what the ultimate good is. He assumes that there are natural tendencies which guide ethical life. Practical reason is what helps us to understand what is morally right in a particular situation, and having an emotionally balanced mind helps towards that. In the 3rd century BCE, a group we know as the Stoics emerged, who emphasised rationality and believed human nature is one part of natural order. St Thomas Aquinas is an important Christian philosopher and theologian who lived around 1225 to 1274. He developed a fuller account of natural law, focusing on ethics of actions. His understanding is deontological and absolutist. His 1273 writing, Summa Theologica, says natural law is a moral code which exists within the purpose of nature and is created by God. This assists people to exist in such a way as to reach their eternal destiny with God. Aquinas's natural law covers the ethics of external actions and the internal motivation for carrying them out. Aquinas believed that there is a basic rule which natural laws follow, practical reason. In other words, looking for human good. Aquinas believed that natural law is revealed in the Bible and in human reason. Aquinas developed a set of primary precepts, rules, required to reach the ultimate purpose and destiny of human life, being with God. These primary precepts do not change. His first precept is self-preservation. Primary precepts are general rules, not specific actions. Particular actions may lead to God if they fit human purpose to preserve the self, protect the innocent, reproduce, live in an ordered society, and worship God. Secondary precepts determine which actions we should and shouldn't do in accordance with whether they support or go against primary precepts. Aristotle and Aquinas both believed that ethical decisions should be made based on the situation. Moral thinking that starts with the issue and moves from practical reason in the situation to principles is known as casuistry and is the form of ethics followed today by the Catholic Church. Aquinas believed that if a law conflicted with natural law, it was not binding. He believed that human nature is essentially good as everyone has natural law within them and are striving for perfection. This is real good. However, actions that do not lead towards perfection follow an apparent good, something which does not fit the human ideal. Something we may believe is good may only be an apparent good and may not be a real good, so it is possible to make errors of judgment. Aquinas believes that human reason reveals some goods and scripture others. Practicing these virtues makes them habitual, but bad habits can also be formed. For Aquinas it is both the intention and the act that are important. The intention is an interior aspect and the act is an exterior aspect of morality. If we act in a good way, for a bad reason, we perform a good exterior act, but a bad interior act. Australian legal philosopher John Finnis, born in 1940, developed the idea of natural law. He adapted it so that it does not assume the existence of God. Finnis suggests that human beings follow seven basic goods which you can see on your screen. He follows Aquinas in suggesting that these should be followed for their own sake, not for the other good they might bring about. Finnis proposes nine principles of practical reasonableness to help us achieve the seven basic goods. These are 1. The good of practical reasonableness helps us pursue good. We need skills and commitment to achieve the seven basic goods. 
Two, we need a plan of life with our aims and attitudes in harmony, so we have a commitment, not a dream. Three, we must commit to all seven basic goods without leaving any out. Four, we should not show favoritism to people. Follow the golden rule. Do to other people as you would like them to do to you. Five, do not live completely in the moment, but try to detach yourself from situations and remember the commitment to all aspects of a good life. Do not get carried away in the moment. Six, be efficient in moral action. If physical harm is necessary, keep the damage to a minimum. Seven, in every moral act, all basic goods must be remembered, not just some. Eight, work for the common good of the community. Nine, follow your conscience. These nine moral principles help us to structure our attempt to follow the seven basic goods. They help us to make decisions when there are conflicting goods. Like Aquinas, Finnis agrees that a law may be legally valid, but morally invalid. The strengths of natural moral law are the same as those of an absolutist deontological stance, in that common rules can be established which structure the community. Aquinas' belief that there's a common nature and morality for all people makes natural law universal, going beyond religion or culture. This might seem attractive in a world in which there is cultural disharmony. Different cultures also seem to be following natural law in preserving life, continuing the species, educating and building society. Natural law gives us a firm basis to be moral. It supports human rights and equality. It judges actions, not consequences. It is not just a law, it is a way of life. Natural law is related to human nature and how humans relate to other humans and the environment. It also allows for the possibility that we make mistakes and lose track of things that are important. On the other hand, some people believe there is not a universal natural law, and day-to-day -day rules cannot be made from general rules, the primary precepts. An essential human nature is not so obvious, as studies of different cultures have shown. Differing moral standards in different communities challenges natural law in theory. Human beings are seen to have different natures. A religious challenge to natural moral law is that Jesus opposes legalistic morality in the New Testament. Finnis's account of natural law takes into account a wider range of aspects in decision-making. Many believe Finnis's theory supports the teaching of the Catholic Church.